everybody, Josh Yaravinerd here from Bishes RV down at Ember's Display at their home in, uh, you know, Elkhart County, Michiana, with the biggest RV they've made to date. This is the new 28BH, and uh, this is the last one I'm going to have a chance to record here at their uh, like kind of open house display demo. But what's cool is uh, you're going to kind of get to see two RVs in one video. They make this both with and without bunks, the no bunk version being the 26RB. Now what's interesting, we're actually looking at the 28MBH Murphy bunkhouse. This is something I've never seen them do before. I've never seen anyone really do this before. So first of all, it's a private front bedroom super slide ember with the ability to have two air conditioners. None of those things have ever been true before now. Now they're still doing their good cargo bunk feature. They still have a lot of that same construction that you're used to, but this is the touring edition made a little bit more for driving down the highways rather than making your own byways uh, like the, uh, the Overland series would be. Um, what's cool about this one, first of all, private front bedroom, awesome direct facing entertainment, fantastic storage, extra tall ceiling, composite build uh, on five sides of the RV with a heavy snow load roof build on the top there, zero 200 degree rated tank heaters, all those good things you expect out of Ember. This actually literally has radar shooting out its butt to make sure that it's safe to, uh, you know, change lanes when you're going down the highway, another of those touring edition features. But the private bedroom on this one, can immediately, if you get the MBH versus just the BH, they make this with and without a Murphy bed private front bedroom. It can convert into an office or an extended living space. Or if everybody's stuck inside this thing on a rainy day, you've got like a get out of jail sanity space in here, that extra room that you might need. Uh, just, uh, you know, really, if, if it's raining cats and dogs and the weather person got it wrong, you can get through the day. Now, let me know what you think about this. A lot of new, a lot of crazy, different kind of ideas and concepts here. I'd love some feedback that we can relay to Ember because truly, your feedback is literally what spurred the creation of the bigger models like this. And if you appreciate how we get down here away from the store to get you this footage first, hit that subscribe button. Let's get rolling. So, like, everybody and their brother builds a floor plan like this, right? Why would you go with this one versus something else? That's what I want to focus on. What makes this different from the Overland Ember series, the kind of off-road, off-grid kind of series, and just what makes this different from everybody else who also makes this floor plan? Because Lord knows there's quite a few of them. First of all, here in the Touring series, we're actually getting floor flush slides. The uh, different type of suspension system they're using on this versus the Overlands allows them to do that. Now, um, this is still in the early stages that I'm recording this. And as you're watching this, notice how there's full storage all the way across the top of that slide out. Um, the, uh, th they're wondering, should they continue that? Like, should they do exactly what they've done here? Or should they remove the cabinets above the dinette? Uh, just to kind of open the space up. Note that when you do that, the windows will not change because they're very big about standardizing and reusing everything as much as, uh, as they can and often as they can. These are those Euro style windows that give you just maximum airflow. Uh, if you're uh, taking a look over here, you see that that's a bit of a no knee knocker dinette. It's an easy up down kind of uh, sleeper system. But if you would prefer it, if you take note here, you see that you can get a freestanding table and chairs. And what's really cool about that is two of those chairs fold away and go away and just get out the way. Now, the one thing you got to be careful of, and I hope I remember when I close this thing up for road mode, is you see that uh, countertop extension. You got to make sure you fold that down. But they actually made it countertop flush. Like, I don't understand why almost no manufacturer does that. Now, up top here, these things have a taller ceiling. They're like six. 10 or 11 or something like that in the uh, overhead clearance. So they are very tall RV, very handy if you're bigger than the average bear like I am. Both in the bathroom and here in the living kitchen area, we get those uh, bigger uh, vent fans. And this is the, uh, the first of the embers that is capable, uh, it's 50 amp standard, and it is capable of being outfitted with a second air conditioner. We'll kind of get to peek that uh, in a little bit. It's actually right behind me as I'm standing here right now. A Little bit unconventional location. Now, with that countertop extension, you can see you've actually got some really nice prep space. Plastic fruit, uh, <clears throat> not included, uh, neither here nor there. Notice that we are getting an actual oven, uh, whereas the, uh, the Overland series just did not have allowances for that. And on this one, with the uh, the theater seat here or the hide bed, you have your choice between the two. You are at a just definitive no neck wrecker entertainment center situation right here. It's just staring you right in the face, basically. Now up around the corner, we've got uh, basically our master command center, and wah, 
life. You see it's a little motion activated. So right when you come in the door, it'll recognize that you come in the door, it'll activate the panel. And then if you need to start turning on the lights, well, pretty easy to do from there. And they've got some cool accent lighting in these, but they use like an amber color instead of uh, the disco blue that a lot of manufacturers seem to enjoy quite a bit. Nothing wrong with the blue. Some people like it, some people don't. They just go with something else. I think would be a little bit easier on the eyes in the nighttime. Notice how they have separate curtains for the upper and lower bunks, and we'll get a good look at that cargo bunk feature in just a minute here. Oh, I just noticed, look at those tie downs back there in that uh, little cargo space. That's a nice touch. You know what else is a nice touch? No floor vents for heating, and uh, you know the uh, carpetless slide out right there. Now we're looking at a, a, a high to bed trifle, but there is a, uh, a theater seat swaption just in case you are kind of curious. And actually, as long as we're standing here, let's go ahead and pop that open, give you a look around. Now, like I said, they carried the overhead storage in the slide all the way across. And that's what RVs always used to do. But a lot of manufacturers have stopped doing that. Do you think that that's something they should maintain doing? Now that I've seen it, I kind of feel like they should. Um, when is more storage ever the wrong answer in an RV? And I think that's a trick question. I don't think more storage is ever the wrong answer in an RV. That's just my two cents personally. As you're noticing with this one though, there is storage galore in here. You've got good wastebasket space, dedicated drawers, and an oven extra drawer below the, uh, the, the refrigerator. And they could get away with doing all that kind of stuff because they have a taller ceiling. That allows them to really maximize the storage in some cool and fun and creative ways. Now, technically, we're looking at the 28 MBH today, the Murphy bunkhouse. They build this one both with and without the Murphy M. Ooh, ooh, smart location for that uh, outlet down at countertop level where you can get to it. Uh, one of the other things I forgot to talk about before now, this RV has standard a 2000 watt inverter so that if you want to uh, be able to run some household outlets in it, all of the outlets are uh, capable of, uh, well, they're all wired to the inverter. They're all capable of being run off battery po uh, power effectively. Literally choked on thin air. <laughs> anyway, you know what it just occurred to me now that I looked at this? Like, the second door here in the bedroom, this is going to help us for travel access. But notice how it's not a skinny toothpick door. It's the same full width door that you have in the, uh, the primary entry area in the back. But look at this. The Murphy, the MBH. You know, you've seen Murphy beds. Like, it's just a traditional Ember Murphy bed, but they've done it a little bit differently here by putting it up in a private bedroom. First of all, this is the first Ember that I've been able to put on camera in full-length video anyway with a private bedroom. But take a look at this. That table, you can pivot it around. Uh, you can get it out of the way. So it could be an expanded dining space. It could be an office space. It could be, um, you know, uh, a, a little work area. Because uh, as you notice, like we've got a 60 by 80 true queen bed. We've got those, um, you know, side stands with the little power pockets beside them. All those cool little things. This does all the things you expect a high class private bedroom travel trailer to do. But it goes beyond. Because look at this. Again, if you've got that sort of Murphy situation, what if the whole family's stuck inside on a rainy day? What if... Um, you know, you are work camping. What if you need a private little working office space during the day or anything like that? This is an RV that in its current form, it could expand and morph and convert like a transformer basically. And it can become and do different things that no trailer like this I have ever seen with this layout ever before could possibly accomplish. But if you're looking at this, you're like, I don't care about that. First of all, if you're looking at the MBH, you could just leave the bed down and use it as a queen bed all the time because it's a 60 by 80 true queen. So, uh, you know, finding um, sheets or a replacement mattress or anything like that would be very, very easy. The other thing, though, is uh, you can get it just with the fixed bed, the traditional queen instead of the Murphy queen. You don't have to Murphy this thing. And this is also, as we're getting up here into the touring series, we are getting central air uh, in this uh, air conditioning system. So there's, uh, you, know, you don't have to worry about like, is the bathroom, is that that private front bedroom, are those going to cool effectively? The answer is, yeah, they're, they're gonna do just fine. Now we've teleported over to the bathroom here. And as you can see, they're still using those nicer, bigger vent fans. But one of the cool things here in the touring edition, take a look at this. 
taller headroom in the shower. So they're giving you more headroom in here uh, than even the uh, the Overland series, which I think is pretty darn cool. You got some linen space over here on the side. I'm not really a fan of open face linen space. I'm told from uh, actual viewers and owners that, um, you know, for towels and things, it works just fine. This is super fluffy friendly though. You can really hashtag man spread and, and, and set up shop if you're gonna be here you know, doing some serious work, doing some serious damage, whatever the case may be. Uh, and there's something about it. There's something about the backlit morning mirror right next to that little, uh, you know, window, which has the same day and night privacy shades we've seen on anything else. It just, I don't know why. Whatever I see in the bathroom, it just churches the place up. Is that just me, though? Now, backing out of the bathroom for road mode, you see that, obviously, I, like, I've got the slide closed in case you hadn't realized. The slide's closed. It's all up in her face. We can still open and close the bathroom door unimpeded. And that cargo bunk function, assuming the bathroom door doesn't block our view, that cargo bunk can actually, like, you could probably load a two-seater kayak if you wanted straight down the belly of this beast. And giving you a little bit of the kayak's view here, pardon my backpack over on the left, Everybody who builds this floor plan has the same hiccup, though. Like, it's really cool. We can get in here. You can get to all the kitchen critical features. You can get to, you know, the refrigerator, the sink, the drawers. This is very snack-tastic travel access. We already saw the crap-tastic functionality of the bathroom. Now, in terms of nack tastability obviously, the bunks are not an issue. But remember that second door for the bedroom? Well, that's where this one's going to come into play right here. Uh, whether you're getting, you know, the MBH or just the BH, this door right here will let you maintain or regain uh, full travel function, although two stage. First of all, what do you think of the different kind of look on the exterior of this one? As compared to the Overlands, which still have the black accents and the little bit pointier nose, they kind of softened up the look of this a little bit for their touring edition. However, like you look at it and you can still tell it's an ember right like they still got the uh the eyeliner around those uh euro style windows i think it's very interesting on the touring edition they maintain those windows uh as well you still got that enclosed privatized docking center um if i'm gonna be picky i think some kind of magnet hold deck or something so that that door is not flapping in the breeze the way it is uh right now would be welcome they changed up the gearbox on this one just a little bit uh a little bit different size a little bit uh taller not intended to necessarily uh, keep your batteries, but basically like your, your propane. Um, on the front here, you've got a, uh, a smart jack. And what that will do is it will remember the hitch height of your vehicle when you unhitched from it so that, uh, you, you know, when you push the button, it'll be back right where you need to, to back under it with your vehicle and get this sucker pulled out of here. You may have noticed they've maintained the Versa coupler on the front of these. I, you know, I don't foresee anybody really wanting to swap that out for a, an articulating like lock and roll hitch. However, what if you've got a vehicle that's jacked up or rides a little bit lower or whatever? The Versa Coupler is a awesome factory installed way to adjust the ride and height of this RV, which I, I think is a cool thing. Got the LCI Quick Drop Stabilizers, finally make it landfall after they were uh, originally kind of premiered in the, uh, you know, the original Ember preview footage that I captured years ago. Also, this is very cool. So first of all, we are ready for side and rear cameras. This has turn signal side safety lighting, but do you see how one of those lights is lit up and one of those is not? Did you see how that just clipped? There's people walking around this display. This RV has active radar being thrown off the back of this thing. And as people move around the display, you can see how that light's clipping on and off. What it's telling us is that it is or is not safe to change lanes while towing. That is, I've never seen anybody do that. Now that is literally um, automotive tech. I believe that was uh, done by the GM people is, is what that's based off of. Uh, you know, I think that is very, very cool. And watching it work in real time here on the site display, I think is very cool. Now they've got a different type of suspension on this versus the Overlands. This is similar, uh, if you're familiar with like Rockwood and Flagstaff RVs, not similar, it's the same. It's a torsion axle and suspension system. Um, the benefit here is like, that's an awesome system for like rolling down the road. It's not great for off-roading, which is why the Overland series doesn't use it. But here on the Touring Edition, it makes a lot of sense. We're still using Goodyear tires. They are uh, prepped and ready for TPMS. And um, the, uh, they're, they're 16 inch tires. They're bigger, taller tires. Now, the taller a tire is, the fewer revolutions it makes per mile, the less heat it generates, the less likely it is to fail. So uh, again, 
built and tuned from the ground up for zipping down the highways. Now you can see we still, of course, have that cargo bunk feature. We've got the little mini camp kitchen out here, although I don't know if this is mini, it's just low profile. You've got a big honking griddle you can actually feed the whole darn family. And remember that 2000 watt inverter? That refrigerator is operating both in transit or if you're unplugged, untethered from the park. So that's a uh, extra cool thing right there, although keep in mind that will tax the batteries a little bit. But looking up top to help keep those batteries up and running, you see that you've got that 400 watts of factory solar up there. That is a new, I think, class leading standard. I've never seen somebody in this size offer 400 watts of solar like this before. That is, that is very cool and I'm very excited to see where they go from here. So once again, they make this uh, without the Murphy bed. They make this without the bunks. You can get the one without the bunks with the Murphy bed. You can get hide bed you can get theater, you can get table and chairs, you can get booth, you can get one air, you can get blue air, red air, two air, <laughs> Dr. Seussian style. If you were gonna get one of these, how would you want one outfitted? Or what extra different kind of change up detail things would they need to do? Or did they just nail it? Leave me some feedback, let me know. Hit that subscribe button if you're new with us and like the video if you're returning. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.